Hey, welcome to Milton Daily Homes. It's the weekend roundup, and uh, just before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you've been watching for a long time, you know that uh, we really throw our heart and soul into this uh, Milton Daily Homes thing. It takes me about an hour a day. In the last probably year and a half, it's been just under a year and a half, we have had uh, well over 300,000 hits on this website, and uh, and that's all because of you and, and the people you tell about this site, and uh, it's a real honor and a treat to bring it to you. I'm a little bit behind today. I was out of course, but five days a week, we ship the product out. So anyhow, 17 properties today, and uh, the first one up is 182 Hampshire. 319.9, it's August 26th is the possession here. Basically with this one on Hampshire, it's it's facing those new four-story buildings that are coming up uh, right there in uh, in Main Street Village, but south of Main Street. And it's it's a smaller townhouse, but at 319.9, it's really the lowest price game in town, especially if you want a yard. And they have actually a 100-foot yard here, so this one's not going to last long. Definitely check this one out if you're okay with a smaller townhouse. Woodley Crescent. Again, another good deal. I don't find the presentation adds anything to the experience, but uh, this is a Bolton model, 1275 square feet. Um, there's the kitchen there. I guess they yanked the appliances out before uh, before deciding to sell. And so it's kind of plain inside. Don't expect much. It doesn't matter. This is still a pretty good price. Um, I sold a, a nice one of these for 333 back in the spring, but we have seen appreciation since then. So 743 Hutchinson, 349.9, and uh, nice in size. This is called a Filgrove model, and it's about 12 something square feet. The complaint on this one is that the kitchen isn't really as open concept. It's a little bit tight in this area here, uh, but it's got a nice big family room. Then there's a separate dining room at the front of the house. And you can see the master, they've, they've upgraded the light fixture here. It certainly looks like they've had a lot of uh, work and time spent on this home. And the nice bonus is the deck there. You get a bit of landscaping in the front and back. 349 is good. You know, we sold one on Donnelly recently that's about the same size, semi-detached, and, uh, and it went in 13 hours. So we weren't far off on our pricing compared to this one too. They're going to do just fine. I'm sure they're going to sell pretty quick. Um, 1112 Davis Lane is at 349.9. We talk about the front back home. So this one, I believe, is backing onto Main Street. And uh, I call it front back because there's actually two front doors. So there's one here, and then there's one in the backyard if they do end up showing a backyard photo. The nice thing about these ones is for the size, you really get a lot of money per square foot. Okay, so if you're willing to live, <coughs> pardon me, with a, maybe not an ideal location, with all the traffic and everything you hear on Main Street, and not really even having a backyard per se. The fence can only go up about four feet or something. Um, you know, it's it's nice that the neighbor fence there, so you've got a little bit of a play area here as well. They always have good parking in the front, in or the back, the front, I don't know. Um, a ASAP possession is what they're looking for. They could have already moved out, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, definitely, value but not the ideal location. 1433 cost again, 379.9. No photos on this one. It looks like it has a bit of a pie-shaped lot, about 92 feet there. And uh what does it say inside? So it doesn't say how big it is. Really hard. It looks like it's certainly a granite countertop, dark hardwood. So they spent some money inside. I and we know it's more than 1500 square feet based on the uh, the measurements they're giving. Uh, in less than 2,000. Beyond that, I don't know much. Hard to say. I think you're far enough away from the buildings, you probably wouldn't have a a, a major issue with them. 1379 cost, again, is where there's uh, a six-floor condo. Um, 536 Savaline is at 419.9, semi-detached. And I think if you're going to buy a semi well into the fours, in my eyes, it's got to really pop. It's got to stand out, okay? So you've got I think this is just off the front door, probably the living dining room. There's your kitchen. You still have to buy appliances, have to buy window coverings. I, to me, like, where's the win? I don't know. When you can buy a nice detached home, we got an 1820 square foot detached hardwood, stainless steel, like detached home on Trudeau, and it's just over 430. So I don't know. To me, it's like, yeah, you might get a couple hundred more square feet. 
but you still have to throw a bunch of money into this one. It looks like it has central air, um, not a ton of upgrades inside. You saw the bathroom counter was upgraded. Now this one on McDougal doesn't have a front shot. It starts off with this photo. This looks like a fern ridge to me, which is 1664 square feet. Don't quote me on that as the square footage, but at 429.9, um, it's a nice kitchen. There's nice finishes, colors, no hardwood on the floor. It just seems to me like uh, three bedroom. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be possible for these guys to get this um, based on what I'm seeing there. 653 Yates. Now you look and you say, okay, semi detached, right? 434.9. It's like 2170 square feet. Um, it says one of the biggest semis in town. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I can't recall anything offhand that's bigger than this. Uh, great photos. We talk about this HDR photography, but not that sort of patchy. They did a a beautiful job with the photos here. You can see the dark hardwood floors brings out the best colors in here. They've got over and under cabinet lighting here. Great appliances. Um, you can see how dark the hardwood floor is. Very stylish. Very beautiful house and. Uh, and you've got the finished basement down below. So with that square footage plus the basement, at this price, this is not going to last long. In my opinion, I think this is a great looking house. Beautiful stuff. 270 McCready, 519.9. And when I look at stuff in the sort of 5 to 525 range, uh, that's a little bit narrow, the sort of living dining in the front of the house. In my eyes, it really has to stand out because there's a lot of them for sale. Um, we see a lot of the flooding of the market in the sort of 480 to 5 for double garages. So you have to stand out up in this range. Um, I don't know. There's not a lot of zip to this one. I think on paper it may make sense at this price, but I, I think you've got some really good choices. We have one on field that's at 529, and uh, you're getting a nice finished basement there. There's no hardwood, but you know the rest of the house is beautiful. So 1059 McLenahan is uh, 544 888, and, I, and 53 by 100 foot lot, 102 foot lot, wonderful. Okay, so. Great for a shot to really, because that's what you do. You're telling a story with these photos. So you're telling the stories. When you walk in, you're going to have bright, open, beautiful um, views from the front door. That's a great, you know what else they've done too is they've actually got the extended windows up above the door. And uh, the kitchen's been upgraded. Uh, you walk down the hall, you have the kitchen over to this side here, and then the family room over to the side with that beautiful uh, rock there. So the funny thing to me is that I think that's a wall there, and then they just have two seats that I guess overlook the chandelier. I don't know. I tried to figure this out. I thought, what is that about? Um, the uh, They're actually overt. Whoops. They're overt in the description here siding onto Thompson Road. So what you're actually seeing with this home, there's the house right here, is Thompson's right there. And it's really clever what they actually do is they say it just, uh, the bus stop is just steps away. Hey, if you're going to have a, a bit of a drawback, turn it into a positive thing. That's a logical positive thing. And I think that for some people, that's very good. Um, driveway opens up into the crescent. It is a safe crescent. Even though you hear the noise, I bet your kids could probably play street hockey and not be interrupted very much. So I do like this one. 2,700 square feet. It's got the upgrades for sure. And I think they've taken some of the location uh, into consideration when they priced that one. Swindell, 597.5. And uh, so you've got a defined entrance, which a lot of people are starting to look for these days. Nice kitchen. The uppers are beautiful here. Lots and lots of money spent in this kitchen. And uh, I don't know why they'd, they'd leave a blurry master bedroom photo, but the sinks have been upgraded, the uh, the counters, everything else. Um, you know, for this one, I think it depends on the size. It says it's between 2,500 and 3,000. It seems like it's probably in the right range. Uh, Serafini is at 629.9. And the nice thing about this one, lots of big, high open spaces. Uh, 42 by 101 lot, that's nice. So right off the front door, living dining. The way this photo is composed is it does look a little bit narrow, but sometimes they do have that squeezing on these photos. Okay, so there's your kitchen. Not super up upgraded, but the colors are nice. Nice high 
family room here, what I'd be concerned with is whenever you've got an opening from your TV watching area to your bedroom area, is that going to hinder your enjoyment? Are you going to be able to put on the, the you know, top gun with the engines blaring, uh, you know, and, and actually have people sleep peacefully upstairs? Okay, so glass door in the shower there. Five bedrooms on this one, and uh, with all that extra space, all the, the height and ceilings, it must be a pretty big home overall. It's going to feel probably even bigger than that. Okay, so we've got, uh, yeah, it doesn't say how big. We know it's less than 3,000. Um, 1632 Arthur's, this is our listing. And it's, you know, it's a it's got some things that you hardly ever see in town and, uh, and it's because people sit on it and so this is a about a 2800 square foot home it's called a Melville or a Stone Church listed at 645 so the flooring has uh, it's more of a natural finish and the kitchen I mean it's nice inside you could probably find you know 10 homes a week that we profile on daily homes that that certainly are are more upgraded in this price range but it's got the goods in the, it like it's got a finished basement with 1500 square feet of space and the big kicker the thing that I think is really going to push this one over the top is uh, we'll go through the rest of the home here. Four bedrooms plus a loft upstairs. There's part of the basement there. These bookshelves have built-in lighting. It's terrific. It's a very well done basement. Uh, laminate on diagonal, but here's the kicker where we start to see. Look how long this is. Okay, that's a hundred and almost 109 feet right across the back. You've got this huge pie-shaped lot. The deck has been built. Tons of money spent on the decking, which typically as a buyer, it's a benefit to you because whatever they spend typically they don't get every dollar back for it same thing with anything a pool outside but so you get to enjoy that benefit um, there's your backyard there absolutely magnificent and people sit on these lots these don't come up for sale because people get them and they hold on to them okay it's like luggage you keep it for a really long time and uh, the, but I'll tell you this home is terrific double car garage there's four car parking in the driveway and it's pretty easy to sand that hardwood down, refinish the kitchen cabinets. I've seen clients do it in a home like this, probably in the area of kind of ten to fifteen thousand. And you still have the stainless steel, you still have the backsplash. So what I'm saying is, is that the inside may not appeal. I'm thinking to the kind of like people in the sort of high twenties, early thirties age, a little bit more mature feel in the home. But it is. It can be it can be modern and and whatever you want it to be the palettes there and the lot is something that you are gonna love if you go check this one out so uh, anyhow that's sixteen thirty two Arthur's way I thought we priced it great nice and aggressive and uh, should, you know people are responding so ninety four Forbes is at six sixty nine and so we've got a forty four by hundred foot lot and this is what I'm talking about is a little bit darker stayed a little bit more geared to kind of the the stylish trend for right now big huge windows there so you're letting a lot of light in um, this doesn't look like it's very far apart but I have a feeling it's just the photo angle upgraded counters you've got the the pantry space looks like a big open space here uh, Heathwood built this home and from what I'm seeing it definitely looks like a great layout the finished basement is certainly a nice feature looks like the windows are pretty high too so this compares with the one on Arthur's um, in the sense that it's got the finished basement, it's about the same size, it backs onto a park, but I would still take the bigger lot over backing onto green space any day of the week. And uh, so anyway, so it's a nice looking property here at 94 Forbes. Uh, 928 Mara circles at 689. And so again, no sidewalk here. So you're talking about four car parking in the driveway. Nice part of Mara because some parts of Mara on the north side back right on to uh, Hawthorne Village Public School. So this one doesn't have any of that stuff. It's a Tothberg, 33, 31 square feet. Uh, it's a really good model. It won the model of the year, I think, a couple of years ago from the Greater Toronto Home Builders Association. Um, dark hardwood floors. Now the kitchen, I'd want to see a bit of a close-up on this kitchen here uh, to really get a good sense. That's a very important room. So I'm less concerned with how the Breakfast area looks. I want to see how that area looks. There's a butler's pantry in here. Uh, the ensuite's terrific upstairs. There it is there. So you get this this nice high peak ceiling. Put a chandelier. You can really 
you create a, a, an inspiring space up there, winding staircase, and there it is. Okay, so 689. There are some cheaper versions of this model, and um, I think it's nice inside, but I think they're also dealing with a high level of competition, even just for homes exactly with that floor plan, never mind all the other stuff. 541 Scott, 689. There are some people that probably are not going to love the fact that there's basically no grass in the backyard. I mean, you've got a pretty good sized lot, 47 by 98. Where's your grass, right? Like, what do you do? You put a basketball court in your backyard. Uh, inside, certainly upgraded. This is a tricky one to sell because of what they did in the backyard. Spent a ton of money. That that interlock is not cheap at all. But I don't know if they're going to get it back at all, really. Kitchen built-in appliances. It's certainly impressive. Granite countertops, the upgraded hood fan, um, California shutters. But you come back to this and you say, mm, I don't know. So it's been out for a while and it's not surprising. Not to say it's not nice. I think that it takes a certain kind of buyer to buy this. Five bedrooms in this home, 3,500 square feet. Best price in Milton for this detached house. I don't know. Dare to compare. I don't know, right? I mean, is that... I know there's been a ton of upgrades. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but 169 Forbes is at 789.7. Now, this same model, um, I, I don't recall the name, but there's been a couple of these that have sold in the last six months in the under 650 range, and they were nice too. They were really nice. The kitchens were upgraded. So at 789, I think this one listed like last week or the week before, and, uh, and they're putting it back out there. So you've got a living room. It's nice how they've got this little coffered ceiling opened up to the uh, the dining room here, and it's beautiful inside. And I get it that you still have to go and see these homes to establish value. Um, at 789, I know those other ones that sold were on Scott. This one's on Forbes, a better street, um, but for like 150. That I mean, that's that to me. Uh, I I just did. It, it would be hard. I'm not seeing, at least from from the listing, how that value's uh, you know arrived at. So the record breaker in Milton was a 785, and it was a double lot. Like you put a, a swimming pool, um, you could put a tennis court. It was massive, and it was 3,200, about the same size as this one, um, whereas this one's kind of on a, more of a standard lot, and, and Heathwood was actually pretty generous with them. So anyhow, that is the list today, and um, you have any, if you have any questions, you want to reach us, give us an email, send us a call. Do you like how I flipped those around? And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with more Molten Daily Homes. Bye for now.